What's going on guys? 1977. Going for the one. It's a 1977 day for me today. Uh, for you, it's uh, seven days for you. <laughs> if you watch all the videos. I, I know not everybody watches every video that I make. Anyways, and the TV. Okay, I'm bringing, back the TV, bringing up the TV again. Lots of people saying it should be on. Oh boy. Not really hearing too much about people. I, I think I got like maybe one comment, maybe two, of like, yeah, leave that TV off. But most of them were like, yo, keep the TV on. It was cool. It wasn't distracting. Just don't look at it. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't have to look. Actually, I can see it in the, you know, I could see it. But yes, anyways. So, going for the one. Again, I've heard this album before, right? It was, a, I think, a donation request a while ago. And I remember it being cool. I remember, uh, like, but I haven't, all right, I haven't heard it again. I heard it the one time. That was it. I remember liking Going for the One. I think I remember liking most of it except potentially Turn of the Century. I think Wondrous Stories was nice. Awaken was really cool. Going for the One was cool. And for some reason, Turn, Turn of the Century and Parallels are the two that I'm unsure about. That I, Remembering. But I feel like Parallels I liked. But whoop. We're going to do it again. So there we go. We'll see what I remember. We'll see what I remember. Do I have to go through all this information again? Uh, let's see. Maybe a little bit of it. Um, okay, so this is Rick Wakeman is back all of a sudden. Wow. Patrick Moraz. It was uh, short-lived. Okay, in a departure from their previous albums, right? More direct songs without an overarching concept. New engineering personnel and cover artist. That's a big shift because, yeah, this album cover does look different. They have the Yes Like Bubble logo, right? Of course. But, like, the, just looking at it, it does look more maybe modern for the time or whatever, right? You got, you know, Starman going on. <laughs> going for the one received a mostly positive response from music critics who welcomed the band's return to more accessible music. Yeah, I, I mean... I liked Tales. I did. I liked Tales. I thought it was great. I liked Relayer. I just didn't think it sonically sounded as good as Tales, which is a shame, really, because musically, I did like it. We've had those conversations. Wonder Stories and Going for the One were singles, okay? In the first two months of writing and recording, Moraz was like, go from the band, which he did not expect. Anderson thought he just wasn't playing like he was involved and that his sound was not too good, and that affected his vibe. It was obvious that he just wasn't getting off on what we were doing. Damn. Several months after his ex exit, Mraz said he had to leave because of the enormous psychological pressures at the time within the group. I felt there were a few things going on that I didn't know. Fortunately, some people did not play the game fair, although the final decision was taken by all members. Yeah, I mean, you know, welcome to the music business. <laughs> the decision was made after Rick Wakeman, who had left Yes in 1974 over differences surrounding their ambitious double out right, and whom Mraz replaced, was invited to play on Going for the One as a Session Musician by manager Brian Lane and business partner Alex Scott. Wakeman had pursued a successful solo career, but by mid-76, he faced money issues after his tour earlier in the year had met its minimal targets. He became interested in playing with Yes again after he had heard a tape of early versions of two of their going for the one and wondrous stories. Oh yeah, that'll get you. Wakeman was surprised by how much the band had changed. We began relating to each other for the first time. I think we had all grown up and become much more mature. Maybe I had to grow up more than them. Well, it sounds like you had an alcohol problem. But yes, okay. Maybe you still do. Anyways. <laughs> yeah. These people convinced... Wakeman to become a full-time member of the group uh, as the group would have difficulty in finding a suitable replacement to play Wakeman's parts on their upcoming tour, but not, did not tell him that they had already informed the press of his return. Wakeman found out when he saw himself on the front cover of Melody Maker. Oh, man. Okay. First engineering job for Yes Future sound mixer Nigel Lubby, who did little more than watch and acquaint myself with the equipment. Squire recalled numerous heated arguments over the use of Echo on the album as the group were divided over its use. The album marked a ship, shift in the band's musical style, having based tales and relayer around extended con conceptual tracks, uh, scale things back and record shorter and more accessible songs that critic and uh, 
biographer Chris Welsh described as user-friendly. In one instance, Hal recalled the band had started to arrange a five-minute introduction to the song before they scrapped the idea as the group realized there are more ways of getting into songs. It was time to go back, right? Some songs originated from ideas from other eras of the band's history, specifically turn of the century and parts of Awaken. That makes sense for Awaken. Squire said that others were almost completely improvised in the studio, such as the long keyboard section in, in Awaken and various closing keyboard and guitar solos on other songs. That's good. To me, those kinds of sections should be, I mean, I like improvisation. Like I really, I don't know if you guys know this. I like imp improvising. I like improvisation. I like improvising within structure also like i think that's a good thing right i mean i know it like okay the spirit of earth thing that's like not much structure like basically key and three minutes that's the structure that i you know that i have right but like within the context of a band yeah i think impro improvising is is great it's great it's great for everybody it's great for the band it's great for the audience because when you have that what's going to happen next great things can happen <laughs> you know i mean it can also suck or be weird but this is where getting good improvisers good musicians that can improvise is key because that's just it's just where magic happens to me it's it's among the areas in music where magic can happen right and where music is really awesome okay anderson spoke about the group's direction at the time the album is kind of celebration over the last two or three years, we've been experimenting a lot and we're happy to have been given that chance. We've come back to happier medium. If we wanted another Tales concept, we would have gone in that direction, but we needed to relax for a bit, a little more laughing and jive. Yeah. Additional recording of Mountain Studios, Parallels, and Awaken features the church organ. I vaguely remember this. Okay, yes. All right. All right, let's just get to it. All right, going for the one. Originally written by Anderson around two or three years before the album was recorded. He had presented the song to the group at the time of writing, but the other members decided against recording it, and the song was discarded. Squire rediscovered the song on a cassette, which he brought into the studio one day, and it was chosen for further development. Howe plays a steel guitar for the entire song, an instrument he had introduced to the band on Close to the Edge. The introduction is what he had played during sound checks while on tour. Its meaning was inspired from various ideas, including sport, horse racing, a film he once saw, and about going down the Grand Canyon River in one of those rubber dinghies and the cosmic mind, of course. Some years later, he viewed the track as a dynamic piece of music that was an underrated and underplayed song in the band's repertoire. All right, let's do it. All right, yes, going for the one. Here we go, bam. Melody's back. Melody's back. Love it. Love it. The piano? 
Melody is back, baby. Yeah. That's going on the hot songs playlist. <laughs> That's pretty hip. That's pretty hip. Uh, and they need to. Steve Howe needs to keep that steel guitar on. He's got to keep that thing on. That's that's a. Uh, I'm looking at on my Spotify right here. So I have going for the one wonder stories and awaken. I saved already. Yeah. So I I knew that there was those. I called it. See, I I. It's not like I remember the whole thing, you know, like I literally only listened to the album once, but sometimes that's all it takes. It's like, it's like, it's like, I mean, I just love that, that like when you hear it for the first time and you're just like, whoa, that's it. That's awesome. That's, that's, this is great. I want to hear that again. It's that thing. I want to hear that again. Let's, let's hear that again. I, I want to, that was so cool. What the heck happened? I want to hear it again. So this is really cool. Yeah, this is, this is great. Again, the melody is back. That is like immediately hits you. The melody, John Anderson's melodies are back. He sounds great, right? He always sounded great. It's just before, you know, on on you know, like the more super more proggy stuff where they started getting more out that a lot of people aren't super crazy about. I thought it was cool though. I thought I think they're great at it, right? I felt like the only thing that was lacking a bit was like melodic stuff. Like the the melodies just weren't catching me, but this is great. And it's that action packed, really thick, dense five and a half minute prog that I that I like. I mean, the longer pieces are cool too, right? I, there's somebody mentioned that like you know I, I know and I know I know that I've said it before that like I like stuff like this, like shorter, dense, packed songs. You know, you can think of like eat like you know. Beatles, Beach Boys, right? That kind of pop where it's just like short, but it's like action packed. I like, I do like that stuff, but I do like longer stuff too. It just depends. And that's also obviously harder to make and keep you there and be great, right? It's harder. You have more time to fill, right? There's more uh, potential to just get sidetracked and lose the listener, right? It's just longer. Anyways. But this is awesome, and just the tension that they build up. I like that. Uh, that there's so many. Sorry, there's a lot of things going on in my head. 
all the different layers of keyboards and the guitars, just the, just the creating that chaos, that tension buildup, and then the release, right, that we're talking about towards the end now, that was really nice. And I liked that throughout all of that, just Chris Squire's just doing that whole, just walking, right? That it, it, you know, the type of walking that he's just doing, just moving around, right? And how he changes octaves and re right, registers that he's in. He wasn't like too specifically high, but I noticed every single time he dropped lower, you just, I just kind of felt it more. Like, oh, he just, he just dropped down. You got a little bit more of that low end, right? You just felt the low end more, which was cool. Yeah, I like that he was the one that was really just the rock within this, but it worked great. It was perfect because there was there was a lot of chaos and stuff going on, all the different keyboard stuff that was happening. Yeah, the keyboard layering, uh, the piano in here was cool. I love Cowboy Steve. Cowboy Steve, I, I just that element to this music is awesome. I like that. That gets me because I like that kind of guitar playing. I do. I, I like it. And Steve Howe is freaking great at it. I mean, Steve Howe is, you know, you guys know I love Steve Howe. Steve Howe is great. He's freaking great. Great guitar player. He's like who I would want, you know, like in a band. He's who I would want. It's like, okay, awesome. You could solo. You can bring that, like, bluesy, right, all that action. Like, you can throw that in there and the jazzy action, all that stuff. Love it. Love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. Okay, cool. All right, there you go, going for the one. Hot song, it's a hot song. Yeah, love it. I love that, that drum fill that just rolled over, right? That was so cool, love it. Love that kind of stuff. Yeah, and to do that stuff and to nail it and to have it work, it was awesome. Yeah, great track. All right, turn of the century. I feel like this is the one that I was less about. I mean, again, I said this already in this video, turn of the century and parallels were the ones that but I feel like Parallels I was cool with. So it may have been turn of the century that I was like, hmm, I don't know, we'll see. And I remember liking Wondrous Stories and also Awaken being a uh, an epic. So all right, turn of the century is up next. Catch you then, later.